that can administer it without being... Somebody say, if you say so. If you say so. All right, it's not going to take me long because I know y'all got things y'all like to do, but I have to give you what the Lord has given me. Amen. Amen. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. It's one of the first principles God showed me when I first started doing the truth behind hip hop. And he gave me this, and I looked up that word power, and that word power translates into the word yod, and the word yod is hand. So the passage really says, death and life are in the hand of your tongue. But what is the hand of your tongue? That is the hand, the creative hand, the ability for your tongue to create what you say. You can have death or you can have life. It all depends on what you say. There is no ritual in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. There is no ritual that doesn't require speaking. It always requires speaking. Somehow speaking activates things. It's the energy of words. And it's the energy behind words that create things. Yeah. Starts with an idea. Somebody get an idea. But then they have to speak it to someone. Amen. You can have all kind of thoughts in your head. But until you say it, you won't get it. Has to be spoken. Amen. Amen. You dating somebody or courting. Let's say courting. Amen. Look, look at somebody and say courting. You court somebody for marriage. That's what we court. That's why you court. Amen. Amen. That's what a courtship is all about. It's about marriage. Finish line. You're going to go on and amen. amen. Yeah. So you court someone and you can be with that person and you can think that person loves you or you love them. But until you say it, it's not activated. Amen. Anybody remember that? That first time? You tell them, I love you, and all that stuff happened in your chest. Remember that? <laughs> Them butterflies, and you almost choked on it. I love you. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> but once you speak it, it's activated. The landscape of the relationship begins to shift because you spoke it. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So death and life are in the power of the tongue. So your tongue is able to create your whole environment. Everything that's happening around you is happening because of what you said. What you have now is what you said. Think about it. It's what you said. If you talk negative all the time, you got negativity. If you doom and gloom and something's always wrong, guess what something is? Always, always wrong. wrong. <laughs> it's something always wrong. You know, people that always, hey, how you doing? Always, oh, you know, I'm just, uh, something's always wrong because something's always, they speak it. A dark cloud follows them around. Thunderstorm cloud because of what they speak. Amen. You try to avoid them at church because after you hear the word and you excited all that, you don't even want to go down that aisle. I'm going over here because if I go down there, she's going to pull it all, pull me all the way back. What words? Words. I know I'm preaching. Amen. Somebody thinking about it too. Yeah, you need to. You have what, look at somebody say, you have what you said. 
Say amen. That's your life. Proverbs 18 to 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So the word yod in this passage is a hand that creates and forms things. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You're going to eat the fruit. You're going to have exactly what you said with your tongue. Amen. If you're looking for trouble and always talking about trouble, you're going to find trouble. But if you're looking for peace and always talking about peace, you're going to have peace. This ain't no name it, claim it message. None of that foolishness. Amen. Don't, don't go hear this and the part about Jeff, uh, 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 Jericho and go try to walk around a house seven times. Amen. Out on the seventh time, the walls came down. You want the walls to come down? <laughs> Amen. Don't be walking around stuff seven times. Amen. <laughs> Y'all remember the saints did that? That was a big thing in the 80s. In the 80s. They was at dealerships. What is he doing? <laughs> Have a shofar. <laughs> what is he blowing? It's not even a ram's horn. It's an old goat horn. Remember that? No, don't you? No, no, no. Let's have some sense. But death and life are in the power of the tongue. But that don't mean you can go speak and say, I'm getting a Mercedes and you're going to eventually get one. That's not what the Bible's talking about. Amen. Don't speak Mercedes. Speak job. How about you speak job and then speak better financial planning? Speak that. Speak giving and offering. Speak what you going to give to God. <laughs> Boy, I done wrapped everything in this sermon. Amen. But it's the truth. According to the Bible, we have the power to speak against mountains or huge optic obstacles in our way. Mountains. Nothing is impervious to our words. Mark 11 and 23, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and what? Shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall what? Have whatsoever he saith. That mountain, what is the mountain? It's not a physical mountain. He was using that as an analogy. It's a, an obstacle that's in your way. That you can speak to, to get out of your way. And almost all the time, it doesn't go away the first time you say it. You got, look at somebody say, you got to keep speaking it. Your faith is being tested every time you speak it. But you have to keep speaking it. A mountain? Yeah, an obstacle in your life the size of a mountain. You can speak to it. You have the power to have what you say. It was the words of God that created the world and all that's in it. Words were here before the foundation of the world began. The Bible opens up with the word. It even says in John 1, in the beginning was the what? The word. The first thing that happened in history was words. Words created something from nothing. Talk about it. Your mind can't go there, so don't even try. But there was nothing, and then words came. And what words said came. Very intelligent words that knew what should come that had never come before. Words. Look at somebody say, in the beginning, words came. Words came. Yeah. Words came. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word what? Was, was God. God is the word. So the words and God came first. Yeah. 
and created everything. That's a lesson for us all. That shows you the power of words. Amen. What we speak can have good and bad effects on our lives. When we are negative and speak negatively, we curse things into a negative state. That means it could have been a good thing. But because you spoke negatively, you cursed it into a negative state. Some of y'all have cursed your marriage into a negative state. Yeah, you're not going to be happy the whole time you marry. But marriage ain't about happiness. You weren't happy with your boyfriend and girlfriend like that. Amen. So, no, that's not it. So, you can't use those times when you feel a certain way to speak something and say something negative. Oh, I shouldn't have done this. Shouldn't have done what? Got married? Shouldn't have had children? Shouldn't have been what? You're cursing it into a negative state. Once it's a negative state and you speak that in your home, your children pick up on that. Yeah. They start feeling negativity. And you know how they fix negativity. They go get positive affirmation from the wrong places. That's why your home can't be filled with negativity. But when we are negative and speak negatively, we curse things into a negative state. Even when it was a hopeful situation, it can become hopeless if the wrong words are spoken over it. Look at somebody and say, be careful what you say. Be careful. Some of y'all was this close to getting a husband. And you spoke negative over the situation. This close to getting that help meet and finally having some favor for your whackness. Because you're whack without favor. This close and you spoke negativity. Spoke negatively and cursed it negatively. Look at somebody say, be careful what you say. We may not have intended to curse our situation, but if we develop a habit of speaking ill things or negative things, then we can create hardship and make our way seem what? Impossible, all because of the words of our mouths. What we said. What we said. Amen. And you know, in this time, 2023 when the world is broken y'all believe the world is broken you don't believe the world is broken go outside in that sun sun will show you the sun say yes I'm broken and I'm mad about it yeah but you speak that if you speak negative things in this time you're going to have a hard time amen amen because things in this time will agree with your negativity. Yeah. And then world, the world will look hopeless to you. Yeah. Then you start having suicide. I haven't dealt with this many Christians with suicidal thoughts, Elder. I get that so much in my inbox, folks. So I'm like, man, you're a pastor. You're a preacher. You're an evangelist. You're a church leader. You're having suicide. The people that you serve aren't worth living for? Is it that bad? But all you got to do is examine what they've been saying. See, the devil's going to speak it in your ear. He's going to tell you there's no reason for you to be here. You're insignificant. You are an accident. You shouldn't have been here. Things are terrible. He's going to keep saying that, but it ain't going to have no effect on you until you open up your mouth and speak it. So you can choose to say, out of my ear, devil, God made me. 
and I'm good with what he made. Things may look terrible now, but they're going to get better. Just like they did the time before and the time before. It never stays. The darkest hour is just before the dawn. It's going to all look at somebody and say, it's going to always get better. I'm going to suffer just a little while, and then it's going to get better. You got to tell the devil that. But he wants you to agree with what he's saying in your ear. It's hopeless, man. This is messed up. Waiting for you to tell somebody, man, it's hopeless, man. I wish I was never born. I wish I was never here. I need to just go on and die. Because he knows if you speak it, you'll activate it. Lord showed me one time the passage, the devil walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But God showed it to me as him walking around seeking who he can get to repeat something he said. He can't devour you until you repeat what he says. Think about your life and you're going to see that most of the things that have happened negatively are spoken of constantly and more negative energy is put toward them than positive. When was the last time you looked in the mirror and encouraged yourself? When was the last time you looked in the mirror, picked up a Bible and read a passage of encouragement to yourself? When was the last time you spoke to your own being? Told yourself, I can, I can make it. I can be better. This is going to get better. Ain't nothing wrong with me. No, don't clap if something wrong with you. <laughs> Nothing's wrong with me. Yeah, I got rejected, but there's nothing wrong with me. Everybody gets rejected. Yeah, they don't like me. Amen. Some of y'all grown still dealing with the mean girls in high school. They didn't want me around. That was high school. You better get over that. Amen. They wouldn't sit next to me in the lunchroom. And you grown. That's all that old wives of Atlanta and all that junk is. Bunch of folk that didn't grow up. Did nothing grow but their bodies with that silicone. <laughs> and they sitting around talking about dumb stuff. She don't like me. I don't care though, cause I just. <laughs> Look at somebody say, outgrow that. Outgrow. Amen. And don't be trying to call everybody in the memory book. I need to apologize to him and she needs to apologize. She still, she still owe me an apology. At that prom, she wore the same thing. She knew what I was gonna wear. Neither one of y'all should have been there. That was the night all hell broke loose. Can I preach in here? Amen. Let it go. Quit talking about that stuff. You can always tell. I said this last week. Well, I say it all the time. You can always tell when somebody is not delivered from something or haven't forgiven or haven't moved on because they keep talking about it. But I forgave them, though. But they, boy, you should, man, what they did to me. You didn't forgive them. Yes, I did, but boy, boy. That's unforgiveness. It'll be forgiveness when you can stop talking about it. Amen. When you can stop staying up at night thinking about what you should have done in that moment and you didn't get the chance to. That's how you know you're not delivered. Oh, Lord, wind the time back. Let me go back because there were some things I wish I had done. You got to let it go, man. Quit talking about that stuff. Quit talking about what you didn't have in your childhood. Quit talking about what your daddy didn't do. Quit talking about what your mama hadn't done. Quit talking about, amen. Look at your life. It reeks of what you've said. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. I was talking to someone the other day, and we were talking about a, a team, a, I think it was a baseball team, and he was saying how all the kids, he had to have a whole sack of prescription drugs for the team. And all the kids in the high school team are on some kind of prescription drugs. Wow. Antidepressants, anti-anxiety, which all of them give you suicidal thoughts. So you got to take something for the suicidal thoughts. And they got this long list, this regiment that they have to follow. Medicating all these children. Because when they went to the doctor, the doctor spoke it on them. Said, so you have anxiety. So I'm going to give you a drug. Why don't you give me an answer? Why don't you give me a solution? Anxiety is relative. That's not flowing in my veins. That's not an organ. That's a feeling. And if it's a feeling, it can be dealt with. With some answers. I know I'm preaching. Amen. But look at your life. You'll see. You have what you've been saying. The bad stuff doesn't get better until you begin to speak better about it. But yeah, you should have clapped on that. The bad stuff doesn't get better until you train yourself. You know, sometimes you have to train yourself how to talk. You got to let the Holy Spirit catch you saying something dumb and say, I don't want to talk like that no more. Amen. So, Lord, help me. Amen. It'll take a few times. Oh, oh. Missed it. It was so quick. But next time, I'm not saying that. And the Holy Spirit will make you aware. And then a situation come up and you'll be up and you'll catch yourself. No, I'm not. I'm going to speak life this time. Amen. Amen. Ah, oh, my husband, get on my nerve. Oh, you get on my nerve. He's so jive. Then he try to hug you. <laughs> that's because that's what you've been saying. That's what you've been saying. Why don't you say this? I picked him. <laughs> that stops everything, don't it? That stops everything. She make me sick. She just so oh, ugh. <laughs> nope. Don't say that. Say this. I picked her. Uh, amen. <laughs> That's it. That's nothing else. That's all you say. I picked her. That stops that. Proverbs twenty one twenty three. Whosoever keepeth his mouth and his tongue. Keepeth his soul from what? Man, if you can learn to keep your mouth, you'll keep your soul from trouble. Amen. You know, the first thing when I start going to my doctor, and then I, when I start going to Dr. Reed, I mean, Dr. Janine, when I first went to Dr. Reed, then I went to Dr. Janine, and I was talking to Dr. Janine, and she was like, you have a very powerful mind. She's like, you can convince yourself something is wrong, and it wasn't, and now it is. Wow. Yeah, remember that? <laughs> and that scared me, but I had to realize the power of it. God gives me authority as a preacher and a speaker, and that authority works on me too. I have to be careful what I say, how I vocalize certain things. I have to say I'm okay no matter what the test look like. Amen. Amen. I have to speak what I want to see because my words are powerful. Guess who else's words are powerful? Yours. Your words are in charge of you. Oh, see. Amen. Our tongue is a transmitter of the heart. Amen. So if you got a problem, I'm saying what you shouldn't say. Something's wrong with your heart. Your tongue is vocalizing what's in your heart. 
Amen. This microphone is a transmitter. That's what they call it. It's a transmitter. Has an antenna. So when I speak into it, it transmits my voice into the receiver, into the amplifier and the speaker so you can hear me. Right? Well, your heart does the same thing as this microphone. If I set this microphone down, it's not going to transmit. It needs me to speak into it. That's what your heart does. Your heart transmits who you are. Amen. Amen. That's right. This is why we should not lie. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, stop lying. stop lying. Amen. Now don't look at your parents and say that and get backhanded. <laughs> you say it to yourself. <laughs> but this is why we shouldn't lie because our intent is still transmitted and can be a hindrance if we are not speaking what we really mean. Yeah. yeah. Our words are powerful but mean nothing if our heart is not behind what we say. Words have power when they come from our hearts. That's why Proverbs tells us to keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. You are transmitting issues from your heart. So we need to pray like David. God created me a what? A clean heart. That way you can hide your word in it. And I won't sin against you. Amen. The energy behind our words affect others. Y'all saw me do the experiment, right? With the rice. Speaking to the rice. Now, how did the rice understand a language? It can't. It understood the intent behind the language. Beings from other dimensions don't speak English. They don't have to because they can translate your intent by how you vocalize it with frequencies. We got a machine now. Dr. Janine can just let you talk in it. And when you speak, it measures the intent of your frequencies and gives her a reading on what's wrong with you. Yeah, yeah, don't that sound like voodoo? <laughs> I tell her, it's witchcraft, but it's okay. I, mean, I know what it's doing. But yeah, but that's what it's doing. It's taking your, because of your intent, now they finally, you know, they're going to keep advancing. Hey, Amen, until we just have phones in our heads. But the, you just swallow this SIM card. We'll, act, we'll activate you. What you doing? We're going to look crazy. <laughs> Just, huh? Mm-mm. And people look at you like, mm. <laughs> Yeah. But it's energy behind our words. When we vocalize, it doesn't have to be understood by other beings. They know your intent. God is not listening to your language. That's why, you know, that's why all of this... Yeshua and called him by his Hebrew and all that, yeah, all that. No, that's not important because he's reading frequencies anyway. He told him, he said, this group of people, their mouths draw close to me, but their hearts are far from me. How did he know that? He wasn't going by what they were saying. He was going by their intent. He was reading the frequencies. He's a frequency being. That's what the light spectrum is. It's all frequency. Everything in here is frequency. Your eyesight is frequency. The music. That's why we can play certain patterns over there. Y'all give it up for the band, will you? Thank you. Amen. We good. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but different movements of the music was affecting the atmosphere. Certain things that Cam was singing was just affecting you. Certain ways he said it brought back memories of something that you had been through. You didn't have your hands up before he said that, but when he said that, you threw your hands up. Y'all, that's frequency. That's our response to it. So there's energy behind our words that affect other people. This is how people... Is that where I am? Yeah. This is how people can know something is wrong just by hearing your voice or tone. 
I call my wife, I say, hey, what you doing? Oh, no. What's wrong? You all right? I can tell by her frequencies. Amen. 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 Come on, man. You've been married long enough. There, there, there's, there's two kinds of hugs you get. There's that everything's okay hug. And there's that something's wrong hug. See, y'all gonna leave me out here by myself, huh? They, they're like, hey, I'm sitting next to my wife, so ask me that after church. But we'll talk about that out there. No, it's two kinds of hugs. Amen. You know. As soon as you get that other kind, you be like, what's wrong? Most of us already know what I do. <laughs> we skip this questionnaire and we'll go straight to what did I do? Because I know it was me. Hey Amen. You know, the world call that the cold shoulder. You try to hug them, they lean that shoulder in. That's all you get. It's the shoulder. What did I do? Yeah, but you know something is wrong. This is how people know something is wrong. Sounds are frequencies of energy that our ears and hearts decode to get understanding. We must be careful to say what we mean and mean what we say because our entire life is affected by our frequency output. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You can throw things off. Everyone has a frequency output. That's how we know you're standing there. You're outputting frequencies that we can see. That's what makes your being being. All matter resonates in frequency. Y'all gotta go back and get Lords of Discord. Uh, Truth on Hip Hop Party. That's when I learned all this stuff that God showed me about it. This is how he sees things. So your frequency output, everything is frequencies. Yeah. And so you're emitting a frequency. You're emitting, you're resonating on a certain frequency. So when something is off, It'll show in your frequency output. That's why she can put the machine on you, scan you, and it'll show. Oh, you got a bad tooth. It'll show your teeth. Because that cavity is resonating on a different frequency than the whole teeth. The teeth that are okay. Trying to make them understand. I'm breaking it down as simple as possible. But that's how it works. That's what we are, frequency. So when God sees us, he sees frequencies. Yeah, you know, they stole that in The Matrix. Remember the movie The Matrix? Yeah. They look at The Matrix, it's all that, the, you know, whatever. They were just, de it was, they were decoding what normal eyes could see. Yeah. Basically showing you what's behind eyesight. Mm. Yeah. Come on. yeah, it's, it's freak, we're all frequency based. Yeah. Amen. So that means heaven is going to be the bomb. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? A bomb is frequency. That's why when they drop it, an EMP unleashes to stop all broadband signals so there'd be no frequency interference for the bomb. Electromagnetic, electromagnetic pulse. I'm preaching here. That's why we have a church. That's why we have a church. And that's why we feel with the Holy Ghost. The Bible said that he would lead us and guide us in all truth. All truth, not some truth, all truth. That's why I have the power of the Holy Ghost. Because I want all truth. I want some truth. Amen. Yeah, I don't care if you don't like it. It's truth. Truth resonates on a frequency. Yeah. Yeah, it resonates so that when you hear it, freedom comes. So when you abound, even by frequency Hallelujah. when you hear truth the Bible said you'll know the truth and the truth will do what? make you free Jesus is the answer this is how people can know something is wrong just by let me get back on this hearing your voice I could go on and on because this is my favorite subject Sounds are frequencies of energy that our ears and hearts decode to get understanding. 
We must be careful to say what we mean and mean what we say because our entire life is affected by our frequency output. Energy that is emitted through our pronunciation of sounds promotes our true intentions. 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. He said, though I speak with tongues of what? Men, Men and of angels. Don't matter what you say. He said, if I have not love, I become as what? Sounding brass. Sound brass and what? If I go hit that symbol over there, it's going to tinkle. And then a few minutes later, it's not going to resonate. It's not resonating anymore. That's all it was. And that's all your speech is if you don't have love. Can I keep preaching in here? Energy makes music so powerful because it can carry intentions without words and project the heart of the author through frequencies that are not even audibly understood by us. But you just say, let me explain. You can listen to an artist and you'll begin to experience the trauma that that artist went through. The trauma that that artist is dealing with. The heart of that author is decoded by your ears in frequency. And it's applied to you. And you become one with them because you join into their frequencies. That's what music is. You, I mean, honestly, they can't do nothing without music. Music is always behind it. They want to sell you something. They put music behind it. Why? Because they can put an intent behind it. I'm preaching in here. Yeah, you can't slip and listen to this artist and that artist. Do you know what that artist was thinking? What they're going through? What happened to them? You'll have trauma that you didn't even experience. You didn't even go through that as a child, but you're, you're experiencing it because of what you're listening to. Yeah. So the heart of the author can be projected. Here's the best example in the Bible. First Samuel 16 and 23. It came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul and David took a heart and played with his what? Hey. With his what? Hey. With his what? Hey. So he didn't sing words. He played with his hand and the Bible says Saul was refreshed and the evil spirit departed from him. Yeah. How did that happen without him singing words? Because of his heart, his intent. His intent was projected through frequencies. The evil spirit couldn't stay because the frequencies from a man after God's own heart was projected. Chased it away. I'm preaching here if y'all give me time. I know this is real, y'all. This is my life's work. I know what God showed me. And it's important for you to know. This also means that we can feel a type of way and say certain things that, uh, that can destroy people. Do you know your words can destroy your children? That's why you don't discipline them out of anger. Amen. 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 Go somewhere and calm down. Because most of the time when you're disciplining out of anger, you mad at other stuff too. Amen. Amen. Can I keep preaching in here? The frequencies of our intent are always projected through the energy of our words. Psalms 52 and 2 says, Thy tongue devises mischiefs like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Sharp razor works very deceitfully because somebody could just swoop and you just keep walking. Look behind you and all your blood is on the ground. What happened? Sharp razor. Little slit. Didn't do nothing initially, but turned into something later. That's what your words can do. You can speak it out. They didn't do anything that moment. But as that child, as that husband, as that wife begins to ponder what you said, they begin to emotionally bleed out. Can 
Can I keep going? So many today are living under word curses and evil speakings. Their parents discipline them with harsh words and negative labels. You don't discipline your child with harsh words and negative labels. Amen. Get your ugly tail in that room. What? Why would you say that? And kid, if they tell you that, say, well, I look like you. Amen. No, don't do that. Just thinking in your heart. I mean, you can't call me ugly. <laughs> I didn't invent this face. But don't do that. Don't speak evil on your children. You old stupid. Oh, you so stupid. Just like your stupid daddy. No matter how angry you are at him, you chose to have his child. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. So don't put him down, you put yourself down. That was your pick. Amen. Men, same way. Don't, don't, don't think you making him tough by talking about him. Amen. Amen. You're not making him tough. No. I know I'm preaching in here. Somebody need to hear this. Their parents discipline them with harsh words and negative labels. This labeling can last a lifetime if spoken during the developmental stages of a young person's life. We must not speak evil of anyone, especially our own children. Amen. Amen. That same mouth. Matthew 5 and 37 says, let your yes be simply yes and your no be simply no. Anything more than that comes from the evil one. So just say no. No, you can't. Say no, you can't, you old. You have to add that. <laughs> I mean, you don't. Because it comes from the evil one. Anything you say past no. No, you jive. You don't have to say that. Just say no. <laughs> Amen. I'm talking to most of the black people in here. We do that. <laughs> it ain't never just no. <laughs> no, didn't I tell you last week? <laughs> but it's a new week. It's another week. That's the way white people look at it. I already told you no. But that was the first time I asked. I'm asking again. <laughs> Amen. So let your yes be yes and a simple no will do. Amen. Y'all enjoying this message? Okay. Somebody think I'm crazy. Somebody ain't got past the graphene oxide. <laughs> Amen. That's era of man four. Destination and destination entropy. I talked about all that, so get that video. This is how babies are born with issues. Because mothers and fathers speak and say things that are against the child in the womb. He can't hear us. But why are you pregnant? Why you do that? Why you pick this time right now to do it? Y'all having that conversation in front of the baby. Oh, I wish I wasn't bringing up. Wish I'd never done this. <laughs> the child doesn't understand the language, but the frequencies resonate and change the development of the child just because it was spoken. Yeah. Babies are born with issues because of what you spoke or what was spoke around it while it was developing. That's how powerful frequencies are. Am I telling the truth, Doc? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Matthew 15 and 11. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which what? Cometh out of the mouth. 
This is what your problem is. What's coming out of your mouth. Not what's going in it. What's coming out. What you are saying. The best part of this power though is when we are able to speak life. We are, when we are able to speak life, we are able to emit life. We can speak light into dark places and against dark forces. That's the power. You can speak to dark forces. There's not a witch practicing any kind of voodoo, hoodoo, witchcraft that can stand against the power of your words. When your words are God's words. I tell people all the time, some of them say, man, how do you find this stuff in the Bible? Brother, we all bootleg preachers. We're repeaters of the gospel. That's all we do is repeat. But we're repeating the gospel. Words inspired by God. So when we repeat his words, we can speak against dark forces. When we speak his word, we can speak against the enemy. If you don't read his word, you won't have his words to speak. Your words won't work. I'm not accepting this. Devil said, well, you don't have a choice. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Well, you better get somewhere and get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Speak God's words. Jesus was tempted by the devil on the mountain. And told him, get behind me. And then he spoke the word. Already written words. We have the power to say it, mean it, and see it come to pass. Luke 12 and 3, therefore whatsoever he, ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Fashioning our speech to match our desires is critical because we have whatever we say. We must stop speaking negatively about our lives. Look at somebody and say, stop speaking negative about your life. Every time you speak negative about your life, something negative happens. You don't feel any better. Speaking negatively don't make you feel better. All it does is bring negative people around you. And they can't get you nowhere. Because they're nowhere. We must stop speaking negatively about our lives, our situations, and our circumstances. And we must stop using the power of our tongue to curse people, including ourselves. Amen. We will have what we say. We must take this principle literally. James 3 and 10 says, out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursings. My brethren, these things are not We must learn to communicate as well. Look at somebody and say, learn to speak. speak. Yeah. A lot of homes, families, marriages are messed up because the head of that marriage won't open his mouth and say something. Uh Uh-oh. I'm going to step all the way in it now. All the way in it and I don't care. I'm going to step in it. You sitting around, deaf mute, your wife. I mean, anybody talk, got to talk through her to you. You just won't communicate. And nobody knows what the home is doing. Nobody knows what the plan of the home is doing. Because she's the mouthpiece of the home. No, no. If you the head, you better open up your mouth and declare some things. Amen. The devil is scared of the head. You got to speak it. Amen. You better stand in the doorway of your home. The Bible says, how do you spoil a man's goods unless you first bind the strong woman? Strong, strong woman. No, it says strong man. So you got to stand in the door of your home and say what's not coming in here. We ain't going to have this in here. We ain't going to have this problem in here. 
I said, stand in the doorway, not in front of her. You stand in the doorway. <laughs> yeah, and declare it over your house because you're the head. So you got to learn to speak. Amen. Your words have power. Yeah. Amen. Some of y'all wives are just waiting on you to declare something. Man, I'm walking heavy in here, Jay Brian. I feel the anointing in here. Folk looking at me funny. I love that. We must learn to communicate. We must speak instead of being silent about who we are, what we desire, and what God has for us. You gotta let the devil know. You can't make the devil think you scared of him. You better let him know, hey, no, this is the plan of God. And this is the plan that's going to get fulfilled. Amen. Devil pushing you around. You just some old spirits of punk. <laughs> Declaring him is creating a world with him. But being silent about him is denying him for the world. 1 Peter 3 and 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him first what? Get his mouth together. What he's saying needs to change. I'm going to say that again because somebody did. For he that will love life and see good days, let him stop speaking evil and saying bad things. If you want to see good days and then his lips need to not speak any guile. Stop talking negative if you want to see good days. Love life. Is anything wrong with loving life? No. He said if you want to love life and see good days, talk about it. Man, I'm preaching. Summary. Most believers never make the correlation between the power of their tongue to be saved and the power of their tongue to be lost. <laughs> you come in church, you confess the Lord as your savior, you believe you saved. Why? Because you confessed it. You spoke it and you believe it worked. You spoke life and got life eternal. So what happens when you speak death? What happens when you speak negative? Fear, doubt, unbelief. But we must confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus in order to be saved. This confession uses the power of our tongue to bring a newly created life to us. It saves us for eternity all because we confess and believe. Well, what happens when we confess death, destruction, sadness, depression, anxiety, illness, unhappiness, and discontentment, etc.? The Bible says we will have it. And this is why it's important for us to watch what we say and definitely speak what we want to see. Amen. Yes. Amen. This is not the name it and claim it superficial doctrine, but it is a true biblical principle that can work for us or against us. The devil isn't bothered by our confession if we do not believe. And God is not impressed by what we're saying if we do not believe it either. Amen. We must believe that what we say will happen and speak against those things that we do not desire to happen. We must remain in faith, trusting that it will be so. When we learn how to control our tongues, we give God the power and authority to grant us the things that we need and desire. Amen. Amen. James 3 and 3 says, Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body by their mouth. Yeah. Behold also ships, which though they be so great, are driven of first winds, yet they are turned about with a very small hill. Big old ship. Little old steering wheel. But that little wheel tells it where to go. Even 
so, oh, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. It can defile the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. Your tongue. People going to hell because of what they said. Everyone stand to your feet. Your little tongue can do it. So a lot of us have spoken things, said things we shouldn't have, been saying it, keep saying it, calling people out of their name, calling our situations bad, speaking negativity on ourselves, speaking negativity on our families, all of these things. And a lot of us, we just grew up in that kind of atmosphere and we were taught to do it. And we really didn't know how it was affecting things. Now the truth has come. So it's time to change what you say. If you need help with that, just come on up to the altar. Just I need God to change what I've been saying. Because I look at my life and I have exactly what I've been saying. I need to change what I say. God wants to help you with that so you can speak the right thing. Little rooter or steering wheel, whatever it is on the boats, can turn a whole, can turn the Titanic. And that's how your tongue affects your life. Little bitty tongue change the course of your life. Yeah. But you gotta be able to keep speaking it. What needs to be spoken. Saying what needs to be said. Declaring what needs to be declaring. Most importantly, declaring what you want to see. If you want to see him better, declare him better. You want to see her better, declare her better. You want your marriage better, declare it better. You want your life better, declare it better. You want a better relationship with your father, with your mother, declare it better. Stop talking about all the times that it's been so bad. And imagine some times that it is good. And speak those times. This is what I want to see. That'll change your future. Change your future. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we thank you for this message, Lord. We thank you for the truth that was spoken in this place we thank you Lord for all of these young people that have come that have responded to truth they heard today the truth resonated on a frequency that resonated with their frequency output they want what was spoken of they want the power to speak life speak better change their existence change their relationships change their very reality by the yard of their tongue so father god temper our tongues right now give us the right things to say even when we're about to say the wrong thing arrest our tongue so we will speak the right thing instead give us life to speak lord help us to speak things and believe what we speak Help us to speak, God, your words, your plan, your desires over our lives. In the name of Jesus. And everyone lift your hands that came up. Father God, I pray for everyone that's up here. Everyone, man, woman, child, boy, girl. And Father, I speak life on them life on their ability to speak life no matter what was said before today father god cancel every negative word every word curse every word that came to negatively affect their life and their decision making 
Father, we cancel it right now by the power of your Holy Ghost. Every negative word that was spoken to a child, to a husband, to a wife, to a friend, to a family member. Father God, we denounce it right now. We take it back. I should have never said it. I take it back and I'm going to do better. I'm going to speak your words, God, from this day forward over my unborn children, over children, future children, future husband, future wife. Father God, I'll speak it in the name of Jesus. And we trust and believe that this will have a great effect on our futures. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Put your arms around somebody and say, if you say so, it will be so. Come on. If you say so, it will be so. I will speak life. I will speak life. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can't even speak it the way you see it. Sometimes you got to speak against what you see. Sometimes you have to declare it even though it's not even visible. And trust and believe that it will come in line with what you've spoken. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Guard our tongues, our mouths, our words. Help us to declare what should be declared. Help us to speak positively and not negatively. Help us, Father God, to say what we mean and mean what we say. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. In the name of Jesus.